Natalie Geisenberger of Germany for the gold medal in women's luge. Introduced to the sport at age 10 by a school teacher. Initially thought luge was boring. Well, now two singles golds, two team golds and a bronze for good measure thrown in. She is about to do what no other woman has done in her sport with a lead of 0 0.330 over her young countrywoman. Here goes Natalie. You'd expect nothing but perfection from the top. Even aggressive lines to the very, very end. She loses just a little bit of time to be a rider, but there's a massive gap there for this champion of her sport. Took 18 months out since we last saw her at Olympic level to give birth to son Leo. He turns two in May, and what a great present that would be. He could take his pick of gold medals from Natalie, perhaps. Here she goes in the key part of the track that sets up the 360 degree spiral, sets up the dragon tail. It did get her in practice, but it's not going to get her now. Great form out of 12 from Geisenberger. Out of 13, through the tail, does not touch her. One, two, three times Olympic champion, Natalie Geisenberger. Yeah, the great human interest stories continue to roll in at these Beijing Winter Games. And here's another one. Try this one on for size. This woman took time off from the sport uh, to work on her family, to have a family, to have children back in the fold. And she continues on her gold medal winning ways. Natalie Geisenberger stands tall, stands alone. She is the greatest individual loser in the women's field in the history of the Winter Olympic Games. And she has a third consecutive individual gold medal to back up that claim. Yeah, that's a wow for me, for Natalie Geisenberger. Good evening. Welcome to Winter Prime, the evening edition on day five of these Winter Olympic Games from Beijing in China. My name is George Davis, and I'm working alongside Chris Taylor. Chris, as I said, the human interest stories, they keep rolling in. And today, we've gotten another one. <laughs> Amazing. And what a birthday present for as well. Turned 34 on the 5th of February. And as I said, another person getting it done at the mature level. 34 years of age. And that's been one of the standout things for me. How many of these athletes have been putting forward gold medal performances post the age of 30? Mm -hmm. Excellent stuff. And as I said, um, three individual gold medals. First that has ever happened for a loser, a female loser. And that just joins the other three medals that she has at the Olympic level. Five goals, one bronze. Amazing um, from this last in terms of what she has achieved and the German can be proud. Yeah, and then Roberts is over there he, over there in Trinidad and Tobago. He is suited. We can't see his shoes, but we know that he must be <laughs> booted as well coming from his important work over there in the parliament. Uh, Anil, the fact of the matter is here is uh, an experienced campaigner who knew she had the field measured. It was up to her she was racing destiny. She only had to avoid a follow-up to claim a third individual gold medal. And based on the quality of this woman, based on this woman's back class, there was no doubt at all that Natalie Geisenberger would have produced the performance that would again have claimed gold at these Winter Games. Well, it was remarkable, and I'm glad that you pronounce your words very clearly because she's the greatest loser, not the greatest loser. She is the greatest. <laughs> and to have a baby six months ago and to come back to win Olympic gold, one must only recognize that different sports require different physicality, different aspects, different abilities in your physiology. Serena Williams had a baby and it took her about two and a half years before and she's still not back to that great form that she had before but in the luge you're able to utilize more technical ability i cannot believe how fast she was going down there that looks like 
one of those slides in a water park or amusement park or a roller coaster, you have to have some sort of gumption to go at that speed with nothing protecting you between hard rock ice and hitting speeds, as Chris said, up to 90 miles per hour. And she did not touch the sides. She took an aggressive route, and it was just remarkable. To win a third consecutive gold medal at an Olympic Games and have a baby son, six months old, he won't understand now. But when she takes a picture, as soon as he's about four or five, he will talk about his money, mommy being the greatest loser. Absolutely so. And Chris, this again, you, you, you mentioned it and Anil spoke to it as well. Experience and being clinical under pressure. But I want to talk about that, the fact of under pressure, because... You can see athletes go to the start of an event and you can see something that you're trained eye, your experienced eye, looking at competitors, you can detect some amount of nerves, perhaps some amount of uncertainty in the person. For the entire time that this woman has lined up in this event at these Olympic Games, even for this final run, there was no doubt in my mind that I was looking at the gold medalist because everything that she did communicated a certainty. It communicated a sort of sure-footedness. It communicated a sort of course, a, a sense of course speciality that was beyond her rivals. And she made it look easy in the end. An event that is fraught with mistakes that can affect your time, affect your runs. She was never leaving anything to chance. And there was no doubt in my mind from the very first run that all the competitors made that I was looking at the gold medal winner again. And an event, as you mentioned, which is one of the most dangerous events at the Winter Olympics. We have seen three fatalities in these events over the course of time. So very dangerous. If you looked at her face when she was about to start, very relaxed, yet focused. I think that was the important part. This is a lady who has been doing this from 2014 in terms of gold medal runs. And she's done it not only in the singles event, but the team event. So it shows that her level of focus is really there to also lead a team of persons to that gold medal as well. And so there's probably more to come. But yes, just as you said, relaxed in the face, a smile, but yet you could see in the eyes how focused she was and hence able to produce a moment of quality yet again. All right, let's talk now about the woman that most of the Western media was telling us before the Olympic Games would have been the poster girl of these Beijing Games. Her name, if you are coming from the American perspective, is Eileen Gu, but the Chinese call her Gu Eiling. Whatever you want to call her, she has franked the form. She has lived up to the hype. We've been talking, Anil Roberts, for the past several days about prodigious talent and prodigious talent delivering under pressure, under the pressure of expectation from others around them and, of the, and delivering under the pressure of expectation that they put on themselves. And this young woman, the geopolitics is never far from her, 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 her discussions with the media. It's <laughs> always there in those conversations. But she's put those things aside, Anil Roberts, and she has shown that she is worth the hype, that she's all that and the bag of chips. Well, she is all that and more than a bag of chips. She could take some doubles and some roti with her because she was absolutely <laughs> tremendous. And just spare a moment, spare a moment in the luge for the volunteers. You see all these shots that we're getting. You see a lot of volunteers all over. There are 20,000 volunteers necessary to make a successful Olympic Games. In the luge video, I would just like to give respect to those volunteers who were standing along the course by themselves in the minus 14 degrees with no one to even talk to and only seeing a luge go by for about 0 0.04 of a second. That must be the most boring job in the history of the Olympics. But get back to Eileen Gu. She did the reverse. She's born in the USA. She learned the sport in the USA. The USA is the big endorsement money, the big media market. Yet she chose to represent the land of, I believe it's her mother, who is Chinese. Am I correct, Chris? Yes, you are. Yeah. Yes, you are. Yes, it's her mother who's Chinese. She went at, at these two superpowers. China is trying to overcome the USA to be the number one global power. Beijing is hosting the Olympics. 
After winning the World Championships in 2015, three months later, she switches allegiance to China, the American media. She is also, she has two million followers on social media. She is has this sort of model look. She's an athlete. She's a perfect package for endorsement products. She chose to go for China, and she came through and won gold in Beijing for China. That is a lot of extra pressure that I cannot even contemplate. But hands off to her. She was flawless. She's brilliant. She's creative. She's similar to the skater, the 15-year-old Russian, in the way that she approaches her maneuvers. She has an originality and a style that is impossible to copy yeah you're talking of course camila camila valieva let's hear from eileen gu before we hear from chris taylor <laughs> that was the best moment of my life the happiest moment day whatever of my life um i cannot believe what just happened <laughs> that was a trick Yo. that i've never done before never attempted before Emma. and so yes i've thought about it a lot but to to put it down on my first try on my third run in the olympic final the first big air free ski olympic final in history um, means the world to me a marketer's dream chris taylor she has uh, 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 stuck up the flag uh, for the nation of 1.4 billion uh, that's the biggest population the biggest uh, commercial market is the usa her other home she is as i said a marketer's dream she is uh, the dream interview for the journalists because there are always questions to ask her about you know how journalists like asking questions of of, of politics about athletes but beyond that she's just freaking good at what she does and she showed today that yeah with all the hype and the hoopla i can do the event competently and when i am plugged in i'm the best in it in the world and she proved that today yeah at just 18 years of age youngest freestyle champion ever i mean and it's so funny that anil talked about her her looks and her beauty and her grace and you said post a girl because she has a career as a fashion model as well so yes diverse versatile is a name i mean just a year ago she was the only female to have won individual gold medals at the world championships and then she comes to the 2022 winter olympics and puts down a performance like this at 18 years of age so the other end of the spectrum we saw the 34 year old yeah. kaisenberger and now the 18 year old goo um amazing performance great that she decided to to you know represent china and it's lovely to see her, you know, do that and be able to have a career as a fashion model as well. I mean, as two diff diff opposite ends. Yeah. I, I tell you what, though, the, the, as we break from this segment, the fact of the matter is those who have given her endorsement deals already and those who are busy with their marketing teams crafting an offer to make to her are hoping that she can be for her event in winter, in winter sports and winter sports in general, what Tony Hawk was for skateboarding for those of my generation. <laughs> People who had never watched a skateboarding run in their life True. could recognize the name Tony Hawk. That's the kind of transcendental impact they're hoping Eileen Gu can have on winter sports and especially on her big year event in terms of an individual discipline. And for her sake, and for the sake of those who love sport, we hope that she does have that impact. Back with more on Winter Prime, the evening edition, after these. He was seeking to become the first person since 1994 to successfully defend his Olympic title in the 1500 metres. He was skating alongside Kim Min Suk from the Republic of Korea who won the bronze in this event in Pyeongchang 2018.
reaching speeds of up to 60 kilometres per hour. They knew it would have to be fast to keep in touch with the Dutchman's new Olympic record. Could the defending champion better that time? He could. Stunning. Yeah, so Kelt Nuis winning the men's 1500 meters gold medal. An Olympic record is what it took. And when the times were tabulated, he only finished 0.34 of a second ahead of his fellow Dutchman, his teammate Thomas Kroll, beating his teammate into second. So a Dutch 1-2 in the 1500 meters. And again, Chris, as we said last evening about the short track speed skating, this 1500 meter event and this display by Kelt Nuis, a study in technical excellence, economy of movement, tactically aware and good enough to set the pace of an Olympic record pace, good enough to set that pace, good enough to keep that pace. Keep that pace. What is amazing about this is at the start of the Olympics, we spoke about the artificial snow and how the outside conditions, we expected it to be a lot faster. Well, it seems like the inside tracks have been really quick in this Olympic so far. I mean, the Olympic records in the speed skating have just been dropping every day. Um, and this is another example. This is an event generally that the Dutch have dominated over the years. Um, as I said, double gold medalist in 2018, KL, um, in the 1,000 meter and the 1,500 meter. So, as you said, first, back, first time a back-to-back -back title has been achieved since 1994. And as I said, another, as I said, very technical, but very composed as well. You saw his face. He was enjoying his race as it went along. And at no point, I mean, throughout the speed skating races that we have seen so far, that have broken the Olympic records. During the race, it seems like they're well off the pace and yep. they're not concerned about that. And then in the last three to four laps, all of a sudden, it changes. And before you know it, an Olympic record has fallen. As I said, 60 kilometers per hour, the speeds he was going at. Really yeah. remarkable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Anil, we, 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 we've said this already and we will say it again, but the technical excellence of these speed skaters is something to behold. And I don't know about any of you gentlemen, but Anil Kelt Nuis looked to me as if he won this in, a, in an Olympic record with something in the tank. That for me is remarkable, my friend. Well, he looked like he had something in the tank. And then I would also like to remind you that he broke, he, the Netherlands got gold and silver. His teammate broke the Olympic record just in front of him. <laughs> and then he came and shattered that by 0.34. Now, when you're going at 60 kilometers per hour, 0.34 is a huge gap. That is like a, in a horse race, Winning by three or four lengths at the speed that those horses are going, five, six lengths. So it's not a small victory. It's a, it's a shattering of, a, of the gold medal. It's a shattering of a new Olympic record. And it's just your class. When George Bovell got the bronze medal to Michael Phelps and Ryan Lochte in 2004, he got the bronze medal. He lost the silver by one one hundredth of a second. And he won the bronze over Laszlo Czech of Hungary by one one hundredth of a second. Now, when you're talking point three four at 60 kilometers, that is what you call a whooping. It was remarkable. And this man looks like he could have gone at 3,000. He hope it. His coaches have gotten it so right. The Netherlands team is on fire, George. Yeah, yeah. Under normal circumstances, I'd say he, he looked to have something in the tank because he had other fish to fry. But in this case, it's other fish to freeze <laughs> because they are on the ice. So Kelt Noyce, the gold medalist for the Dutch in the 1500 meters on the ice. Back with more on Winter Prime, the evening edition after these.
racing. Here we go. The battle for the gold. Both women will be walking away with a medal today, but of course both want that gold around their necks when they are on the podium. It is neck and neck, but Ledecka is pulled ahead by less than a tenth of a second. You expected much. I think the Ledecka is going to try. She's extending that lead. It's a little wide there. Opening up the door for Obing to get back into it. There's the split. 0.51 up. Ledecka with the lead. Can she run away with this one? She's got to stay focused here towards the bottom. No mistakes. And Obing has a mistake. And that means Ledecka will come away with the gold medal here today. And Obing will come away with the silver. So, trivia question. Who's the first athlete in 90 years to win gold in separate events at the same Winter Olympic Games? The answer. This 26-year-old Czech woman, Esther Ledecka, after her gold medal run in the parallel giant slalom, overcome with emotion. And why not Chris Taylor? Because she's just vaunted herself into company that only she alone is keeping at this moment. And we're, we're ever to talk about an athlete who is full of pedigree. Let us look at this lady. This is a lady, her mother was an, was an international figure, sta fi figure skater. Her grandfather, ice hockey star, Olympic medalist, world championship medalist. Her father, famous musician in the Czech Republic. So coming from a lot of pedigree, and as you said, to win the title in 2018. And let us remember, when this 26-year-old, then 22, won the title in 2018, she was ranked 49th in the world. It's one of the biggest upsets in Winter Olympics history when she lifted that title, unbelievably. And to come back here, well, obviously she was the favorite here. And to put up a performance like this, it just shows her quality. She had never won a medal before in 2018 and put forward that performance. This one, just another exquisite one to go with it, back-to-back -back champion. Yeah, well, Anil, guess what? Chris has given us a lot to chew over. The fact is that this young woman is bred in the purple. And based on her run today, she needs no advertisement of her well-being. She needs none whatsoever, and it's <laughs> amazing. And she does giant slalom. And Chris, she was going at 70 miles per hour down a hill with her feet locked onto a snowboard and taking corners with consummate ease. Brilliant. This parallel slalom is so... It's unbelievable because you have to train yourself. So we always say stay in your lane and stay focused. But in this sport, you can't help but notice in your peripheral vision and feel the competitor next to you. You saw the pressure that Ledeca put on the girl who came silver, who was racing down there with her in the final two turns and forced her to go wide. And, and she didn't finish the last uh, turn and, and the finish line. That was just the pure pressure and technical ability of Ledeca. I would just, was just waiting to see her sing her interview like her family <laughs> Jean because she did everything else. Yeah, yeah, Ledecka there putting the pressure on Ubing, who cracked in second place uh, to take silver. No disgrace about the pressure from Ledecka's awesome run. Told on Ubing, and she wasn't able to produce her best run. Gentlemen, we're almost out of time. A few seconds left, but we have to comment on Italy's unbeaten run, well, unbeaten passage to the gold medal in the mixed curling event. Yeah, great stuff. Um, and to think that they'll be able to defend their title in Italy at the next Olympics is even nicer for them. But yeah, they were actually debutants in this competition. And that's the amazing thing to come away undefeated. So really a great achievement. Something that it reminds me quite somewhat, gentlemen, of marbles. This, this game curling where yeah. you, you, you need to get everything within a, within a small radius of each other. And um, a lot of skill involved and, and very technical. Yeah, um, uh, Anil, Chris used up all the time. Uh, I just have to say <laughs> goodbye to you and that we'll see you tomorrow for another edition of Winter Prime, the Evening Edition. <laughs> There you go. All right. So that's Goodbye, all. She, my yeah, friends. yeah. That's all she wrote for tonight's show. We'll be back this time tomorrow. But of course, the morning prime is handled by Mariah and Gerard. Tune into them early on the morning on Tuesday uh, to get more information about the Winter Games on Wednesday. Tomorrow is Wednesday, correct? Yes. There you go. I'm losing track of the days. <laughs> it's Wednesday. Tomorrow is. Bye bye.